Oh, so we're sitting here eating edamame with my buddy Joe. He and I have known each other for years and years. We actually met because um, I had an idea for a new type of boot. And at this point in time, he was on uh, the show uh, Dual Survival. So I sent him the idea for the boot and he really seemed to like it because he emailed me back within just a couple of days. Some things came to pass that didn't really work out in our favor, so that a whole idea kind of got scrapped. After that, he and I just kind of stayed in touch with one another. We developed a little bit of a friendship. So from there, he would go on to, you know, try new and great uh, business endeavors, as would I, and we just kind of stuck with each other. And anytime that we ever need each other's help or uh, if I need his help, you know, we always just reached out to one another. And we've been there. It's just kind of been this cycle of friendship and, and uh, camaraderie that has kind of cycled through our whole time of knowing each other. We both, you know, have time in the military, so I think that kind of helps uh, kind of grow that bond a little bit. He decided to come down just recently and, and, and explore my hometown, which I'm kind of glad for. Like, how, how do you like it so far? How was your trip down? I'm lucky because it was supposed to rain. It's been raining where I live like really bad. Mm -hmm. So we got here, no rain, a lot of traffic. There was a ton of traffic. Oh, couldn't believe it. The 85 was terrible. Dude. But yeah, it took us about three and a half hours. And that was just stopping, having lunch too. So, but no, it was good. I ordered some ramen soup. I love ramen soup. So <laughs> I'd eat it like every day if I could. If you guys have seen the video that I did here at Zen Ramen Sushi Burrito, you already know that the food here is great. So that's where we ended up staying tonight. We were going to get pizza, but he gave me the choice. So I was like, you like sushi? <laughs> yeah. So we decided to come here. But, it's healthier uh, too, by the way. It, it is healthier. But tomorrow, hopefully, um, it's tomorrow's supposed to be raining. Like, it's supposed to be raining and storming. So we're still going to go over to a place called uh, Stump House Tunnel. Whether it's raining or shine, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll brave the weather just a little bit so that we can go check that out. I have been up as far as to the tunnel, but I've never been inside the tunnel. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. They're like, like they, awesome. they have some really, they have a really awesome waterfall down there with like a little trail that you can walk down to get to the waterfall. But as bad as the rain has been lately, it's probably pretty bad washed up right now anyway. So check it out. I mean, but yeah, that's what uh, that's what we're going to be checking out this week. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to get back off of this thing so that I can enjoy Edamame. some food. That's right. Edamame. Edamame. To tell this story while on, on video. <laughs> All right, great. <laughs> He's fixing to tell us a story about Waffle House. Oh, Lord. I love Waffle House, but unfortunately, I can't make it out the door without going to the bathroom. And sometimes <laughs> the bathroom's taken, and I got to use the ladies' bathroom. Okay. But I don't know why, though. I mean, it's the it's only place I eat at that. It's the greasiest food that you've eaten all day. That's exactly what yeah, it is. It, so we just got done eating over it. Ramen sushi burrito. How'd you like it? Delicious. Yeah, it was good stuff. Well, I'm the Some of the best ramen I've ever had. I, I turned them on so that I can vlog. Here, take the camera and talk about stuff. Say some things. What do I do? Yourself. Say hi. Yourself. hi. She said hi. Oh. <laughs> I've never been to Clemson before, but I do like this town. I just wanted to kind of get a little bit of uh, friendly banter. You know, us giggling together. Everybody giggle at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> can I get over? <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I can't see. I can't either. Yes, you're good. All right. Just go for it. Because the road action just, just ended. Make sure you're recording this. Yeah, just I'm ended. recording. <laughs> just it's a good day. It's a good day, man. Yeah, um, that was good. I love ramen. I could literally eat ramen soup every day. I think Asian between Asian food and Italian food is probably my two top favorites. Probably Asian if it's done right, like like especially if like I love like Chinese buffets. <laughs> and here we are pulling into this beautiful seven star yeah, hotel, seven stars, the best Western Plus. <laughs> that I can't even drive the truck through; it's so small, and we are almost out of space here. That's the only thing about this truck. I love this truck, but it's there's a place right there. There's a spot right there. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Look at all that space right there. Right. <laughs> you can figure out a way to put this thing on there. <laughs> What do you think, honey? If you need me to, I can get out and put it in there for you. I think you should make sure you're recording this one. Oh, oh I'm recording. Actually, I'll drive. He's hey, gonna I, drive around. I'm gonna drive around the block one more time for you. Stop. <laughs> it's good to meet oh, you. Oh, hey, she one thing. One thing. Red dot sight for you. Oh shoot, yeah. And a pretty cool knife. Oh and heck yeah. And a gift bag. <laughs> and a gift bag. And a gift bag. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Right, I'll show you guys this when I get back to the house. I appreciate you guys, it. You got it, man. Had a really awesome night.
and Joe got to eat some sushi burrito, which is one of my favorite things to eat, by the way. I wasn't expecting, like, I was expecting this, but I was not expecting this. And when Joe gives you a knife, you know it's probably pretty good. <laughs> I, like I said, I was expecting this, you know, uh, he asked me if I wanted it and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. So, and I can tell you that if it was in his arsenal, it's probably worth owning. He, he knows what he's looking at and uh, when it comes to anything uh, related to weaponry, tactical uh, sighting, optics and stuff like that. So having something like this guy in my kit is definitely going to be very well appreciated. Joe definitely appreciates a good knife. Matter of fact, he had his own knife line. I would love to get my hands on one of the knives out of his knife line, I'm not gonna lie. I'll put up a couple of images of some of the knives that he had. He, he definitely has a very healthy respect for blades. And this guy has like a nice recurved handle. It's got the HX Outdoors sheath for it. Uh, really nice uh, molly attachments and uh, the leg wrap string there which comes in handy for more than just wrapping around your leg uh, but it's uh, titanium coated 440 stainless steel uh, HX outdoors blade and it's a D123 really really good looking blade dude it's definitely got some really good weight to it I like the forward curve it's got a really nice grip to it fairly ergonomic this thing's got a really, really punchy blade to it, man. That's really nice. Uh, I said it in the truck with him. I'll say it again, Joe. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Yeah, one thing that I really hold dear in my life is the ideology that, you know, somebody can go out and buy you something at any point in time. It means a lot to me when somebody goes out of their way to hand me something that, you know, they've owned for some time. You know, regardless of how much they've used it, it's just in my personal opinion, more personal. So, kind of keep that in mind next time somebody gives you something out of their own personal effects instead of just going out and buying you something. How are you feeling? Tired. She's got to work tonight. So, but I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Going to meet up over at the hotel at 9.30. Get our happy butts over to the Stump House Tunnel and check that out for the very first time on the inside. She's going to go too. I'm going to make her go. Because last time I went to Stump House Tunnel, I didn't actually get to go inside because I was waiting to go in with her. I, I made that promise to her. It is 8.40. We don't have to be over the hotel till 9.30. It's nice and early this morning. What? Are you okay, sir? I'm big skeezes. But, yeah, I'm going to have a good day. Um, right now, it's not really raining, but I'm sure it's going to start raining down on us once we actually get to the tunnel. So, we might not get wet on the way into the tunnel, but... On the way back out of the tunnel we're probably going to so i made sure to wear a white t-shirt today which you guys already know you already know this is my durian shirt so yeah gonna have a good good dinner tonight i think it's gonna turn out really well Ooh. Good boy. <laughs> let's start obi one we have a new roomba by the way guys his name is obi one clean obi Hmm. He's a smart robot. Where are we going? You know where we're going? Yes, I know where we're going. Are you sure? I know where we're going. I'm sure I know where we're going. I don't know where we're going. I'm going over. I never travel anywhere in the daylight anymore. <laughs> so sad. That's, that's so sad. Nice hoodie. Thanks. It's got your face on it. Can't see it because of my hair. No seatbelt. We have made it. <laughs> How'd y'all enjoy the drive up? Oh, it's nice. 
<laughs> so what is this, uh, was this like a railroad tunnel that they were going to build that they just stopped? Like, it was, was. They were trying to connect the railroad from Charleston to the West Coast. And oh. they they ran out of money, basically, right before the Civil War. Yeah, she uh, she's my historian. She <laughs> does all the research. There you go. Oh, I get to... Yeah, you, you get to... You want me to walk and look at a camera at the same time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if y'all noticed all of, like, the really run-down looking houses that look like people made them themselves. This was oh, yeah. a This was a really poor mining town. Oh. And a lot of the people lived in, like, shacks, and it was sort of like a shanty town. No kidding. Okay. Yeah. So... The mountain that defeated the rail line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they spent millions of dollars. Ten of the people that were working on building the tunnel actually died. So this is actually considered a very haunted location. That's what he was saying. Yeah. Thank you. I love these. I think it's laurel. It's called laurel trees, or I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we had these. Yeah. I just think they're the coolest. They, they're very reminiscent of like uh, the magnolias. <laughs> yeah. Exa yeah. Exactly. That's why I like. I love magnolia trees. That's her. You and her have so much in common. Dude, it's not I even funny, the dude. They look like they're rubber or plastic or something. Yeah. Yeah. So lo cool looking. A lot of the miners actually used hand tools to chisel out the tunnel. <laughs> That's ridiculous. There's an old uh, rail card up there. Nola read about it a little bit. Yeah. Probably. They work 12 hours a day. Yeah, was, yeah that's um, that's pretty significant. Now, wow. uh, I think the tunnel is supposed to be like a quarter mile long. Yeah, it's a thousand feet from front gate. Right, is that what you said? A thousand six hundred seventeen feet. Now, part the middle part of the tunnel actually collapsed. Oh wow! And it said that you can still walk through there, but it's prone to flood. Oh, dude, there's some like fog. This like that's eerie. Let's see. Ooh. There's some fog that's like real low on the ground there. Oh, that's cool looking. Okay, Get yeah. In there, recon it for us. Hold on. Dude, that is so dark. Sacrifice. <laughs> Let us know if you see anything once you get yeah. to the end, okay? No. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no pretty, ghosts. Pretty dark. I'm getting a video. Oh my lord. <laughs> get in there. Recon it for us. Leave it <laughs> us to be at the back of the tunnel, huh? Of course. And of course, nobody's got a headlamp. Oh, no. Nobody's, we only have a hundred of them at home. Oh, I got one at home, too. Oh, my lord. Oh, this isn't going to do us oh, very yeah. well at all. Oh, yeah, this is great. <laughs> at least I can see where I'm putting my feet. Guys, I don't know. Like, look how dark it is already. We've, we've so, only just barely scratched the surface of this. This makes me think of that video that we watched about the tunnel in Colorado oh, where the bus was crushed. Yeah. <laughs> and all those kids were buried alive. Yeah. All right, so we've made it to the portion of the tunnel where the tunnel has actually collapsed. And from what I understand, they actually used this portion of the tunnel. Clemson University owns this tunnel now. And they actually used this portion of the tunnel for a while to make their blue cheese, which they've uh, since relocated where they make their blue cheese and uh, over to the college itself. But They actually recreated these conditions so that the cheese will cure the same. That's crazy. Oh, wow. What did you say about blue cheese? Clemson University <laughs> used this tunnel to cure their own type of blue cheese. Oh, my God. And they actually, they, so they own this area. They own almost all of this. It's like part of their experimental forest. Oh, wow. And so they recreated the conditions of this tunnel at the university so that they can, the cheese will have the same flavor. Oh, that's really cool. Where can we try some of this? I, I don't know, but you're on your own with that because I hate blue cheese. I, don't, I, I would love to know because I, I don't know. I, I like blue cheese too, man. All right, so she's going to stay down here. We're going to walk back and we're going to see if she can yell for us. You can't even, like, you can just barely see the light back there. Hello? Wow, you can barely hear me. Louder! Well, I thought you'd be able to. So that's. The rest of our team at the very end of the tunnel that oh, you can get to. Yeah. We're just seeing if you can go all the way in the back and hear it out front. Actually. Uh, well, Joe, you got to see the Stone Pal Tunnel now. Yeah, that's cool. Not your, uh, not your average tunnel. No, it's not. <laughs> we could barely hear you. Is that a good idea, honey? Yes, it's fine. 
You of all people. It's fine. <laughs> oh, of course, there's a perfectly normal staircase on this side. I did the same thing. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I did. Yep. <laughs> okay. Y'all sucked it in. But we did. We did. Counter. We did. Had the double chin. For the vlog, okay? Yes. I need you to tell me a really embarrassing story about Joseph Ted I. A really embarrassing Very, story? Like as embarrassing as you can make it. When I lived in Vegas, this is a long time ago. <clears throat> I have IBS really bad. Oh. And it, it's just gotten worse over the years. But anyway, I was in Vegas. And that's when I used to drink a little too much. And I had eat, just eaten breakfast. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. And we were driving down the road. And my buddy was driving. And I said, look, dude, i got to go to the bathroom right now. And he's like, oh, we'll just wait till we get home. I'm like, I'm not going to make it. I said, pull over right here. And I uh, I jumped behind this bus stop and kind of <laughs> did my thing. <laughs> I couldn't help it. It was either that or crap in the car. I hear that. So, yeah, that was pretty that was pretty bad. But I was young. I was like 23 years old. What do you yeah. think? I'd do it now if I had to. Well, when I was like 28, I was driving trucks and I, I was going through uh, Wisconsin and I had eaten some truck stop food uh, no, no, no. and it started getting on me really really bad so i just pulled stomach. off to the side okay on the side of a very very busy uh interstate and i used my two back tires as a seat oh hey that was <laughs> actually that was pretty creative though yeah like in it for those of you that don't have ibs you're lucky because you can't stop it it's instantaneous like when, uh -oh. when it beckons, uh -oh. you have to yeah, answer that call. Uh oh, yeah, it's yeah, you're running. <laughs> yeah. So I used to hunt as a kid all the time, and then um, I just stopped hunting for many, many, many years. So I went hunting for the first time, deer hunting, two years ago with a friend of mine named Dennis. And um, so we had walked to this swamp, this big swampy area, and we were right on the edge of it. And he's like, "Look, dude, you park your carcass here. I'm going to go about 300 yards down there." and um, we'll just sit here for a couple hours and wait. So um, I was standing for a while and I finally sat down next to this tree. And I sat down and about a minute after I sat down, I thought, man, I, I thought I left my wallet there were in the car. And I looked down and between my legs was a cotton mouth. I had sat on a cotton mouth and its head was right between my legs. I had my pistol with me. I pulled my pistol out and I'm like, this is probably not a good idea. So I pre-holstered and this thing's going <laughs> and it's trying to bite me. And it was just pinned down right where it could not get to my leg or my private areas. And so I took the muzzle of my, I had a um, 300 blackout and I freaking stabbed this snake's head. I buried the muzzle about that far into the mud. So I had to clean it, but anyway, I ended up sit, this is first time hunting after all these years and sat on a on a cotton mouth and I knew it was a cotton mouth because after I killed it, it cotton mouth have white mouth it's anyway so I picked this thing up it was about it was about that long because here I am I'm walking through the woods carrying this cotton mouth and there's my buddy he's like what is that I said dude you're not gonna believe this but I sat on this damn thing he goes you know I've been hunting in these woods for years I never even saw one. Dude, I could have been bitten. Yeah. That could have really, dude, that would have been a bad, because that's and where you your wouldn't femoral, have even known it. No, dude. And that's where your femoral artery mm -hmm. is and stuff. So anyway, but yeah. And it was weird. I just sat down and I'm like, I thought I had my wallet. I looked down and his head was right there. <gasps> I'm glad, I, dude, I all see that's when you don't panic. Because if I would have sat mm -hmm. up even a little bit, it would have been done. Yeah, it would have bit me for sure. And I had a Glock 43X with me on my, on my, and I was like, I'm so glad that you didn't do that. Dude, I just couldn't get the right angle. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just imagine you there Dude, with a you pistol. Should see like, me. I was sitting like this. I was like, it's going, and I'm trying to shoot its head like that. Dude, it was, it was actually kind of comical later. Yeah. And then well. we linked up, then we linked up with a bunch of his buddies. Uh, Cause there was about seven of us that went hunting. And, and it was, we were all around the swamp and I come walking out with this thing and I told them what happened and they all just busted out laughing, man. It was hysterical. <laughs> That's so and then good. one guy's like, and you're the dude on that survival show. Like, yeah. <laughs> so we were on our way back in and as we passed through to go to Stone Palace Tunnel, we actually passed by a very close friend of mine. 
Um, he's buried here in the cemetery that we're at, and we we called him Boots. His name was Anthony. <clears throat> Boots was one of those individuals that was just loyal to the core. Like, if you called on him, he was there 100%, 110%, every single time. So I, I definitely wanted to stop on the way back through and just give him a little bit of love show him a visit and um, kind of introduce you guys to him because he meant the absolute world to both of us to our kids like every time he walked through the doors my kids were like wrapped around his ankles uh, literally <laughs> so uh, let's introduce you guys to him Boots got his name by me um when I first met him, one of the things that I always would pick on him about was the fact that he would always wear his cowboy boots with his jeans tucked into him. And uh, he had this uh, kind of a little bit of a pigeon-toed walk. And I always kind of goofed him on that, you know. It was out of love, 100%, but um, that's actually how we ended up meeting. Um, and uh, he was uh, working at a convenience store here and I ended up starting a uh, little bit of a club, like a motorcycle club, and uh, inducted him in. And he was one of the most beloved individuals of our whole group. He was probably the most dependable out of all of us. He came and sat with you in the hospital when you were in the ICU. When um, I got that really bad migraine in like a few days. I don't know if you remember Yeah, he, I, I, I do. He would, like, he would call into work. If he, if you needed him, he'd call into work like that. He didn't care what they said. He was there. He'd be like, I'm on my way. No questions asked. I'm on my way. That was it. Period. I mean, you didn't even have to have a great, that great of a reason. If he, if he even thought that you needed him, he was there. I love that man. So we're sitting here waiting for dinner. Um, I, I got a few more minutes until I can take the steak out uh, and put it out of the sous vide and put it in the frying pan. But while I have this little bit of time here, Joe, I want you to tell me your scariest experience in the military. And I know I know it's in the book, all right? Mm -hmm. But I want you to, because some people don't own your book. Yeah. And which is unfortunate, by the way. <laughs> Go to Amazon, buy his freaking book. I love that Yeah. So actually, the scariest thing that happened to me, I wasn't even in the military. I was in ground branch with the agency, um, which I kind of came out of the closet um, about six months ago and finally talked about the fact that I was with the agency and I was in a special activities division. And so anyway, um, yeah, it's in my book. The scariest thing ever happened to me was that me and this other guy were on an op. It was a daylight op, of course, and we got dropped off um, basically two train features away from a target that we were going to be calling in a JDAM on. But anyway, we didn't make it, got compromised. We were in a place we weren't supposed to be, and for 72 hours, basically in a running gun fight with a bunch of jerks. And so um, it was just one of those things where ill-prepared like didn't think you know kind of like black hawk down oh we don't need we don't need nods you know mm -hmm. like we're only going to go same exact thing happened it was just two of us <clears throat> but it was um it was it was horrifically scary because um it was just him and i and it the initial contact we had was basically a far ambush we we're probably four or five hundred yards away and rock ground started hitting the rocks around us we're like oh shit. didn't even see them until we started looking and it was a handful of dudes like maybe four maybe mm -hmm. and then as we started moving they obviously had comms then there was like seven then there was ten and it just it got up to a point where like we we were out of ammo pretty much mm -hmm. i had one magazine left um and not even a full mag but um what kept going through my mind was watching these damn videos from al-qaeda and and the Taliban and, you know, ISIS of like just torturing and decapitating people. I'm like, man, I'm going to end up on like Ultra Zero's Funniest Home Video. That's what was, it was starting to play um, havoc on my, on my mind. So, but 
to the credit of the guy I was with, think Steve, he was a former Delta guy, and he was in Black Hawk Down. Mm -hmm. he, so he was a very seasoned and experienced dude, and he was very calm during the whole thing, you know. Um, and that's and I talk about that when I coach people. It's like you know, the minute one person starts losing their, then the next, and then the next, it's like it's just like a cancer, right? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. He never did, man. He was very calm, but I was really rattled because um, I knew. You know, we were pretty much out of ammo, and after that, I just, what are you going to do, throw mm -hmm. rocks at people? But that was the scariest point. We literally got to a wadi where there was no way down it. It was probably 80 feet, and it wasn't like this. It was yeah. straight up and down, and it went forever in each direction, and it was just like, this is kind of like where it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. And we, the bird ended up coming getting us, um, and the guy backed, so if this is the wadi right here and we were standing he basically backed the bird in like that and we jumped into the back of it we jumped in the it was an mi-17 it was a um russian helicopter we used those all the time but that was really scary dude it, i'll tell you how scary the reason i didn't hunt for a while yeah. was because of that i just couldn't hunt because i felt the yeah i felt the scaredness of what it feels like to be hunted like that and i just I'm like yeah i'm gonna hunt for a while so we just got that eaten yeah man and uh i i don't know about them but i enjoyed my meal um, it was delicious i've never had a steak cook like that it was amazing never had a steak cook like that and i've been all over the world and i've never had a yeah definitely a pro it's a process oh yeah so it's just like throwing it on a grill yeah that's yeah. for sure yeah so that by step, by step. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a long process. I actually have a video where I kind of go through exactly how I made the steak that I made tonight, and I'll put a link to that in the description, But uh, which means that you guys can go and check that video out too. Yes, it's we will. Um, it's, uh, it's a really, it's an easy recipe, but it's time consuming, so. Yeah. Yeah, he he got yeah. to he got to see exactly how time because yeah, it and was you even cut and you well even cut it. it off an hour. Yeah, yeah, cut it off an hour. Yeah, if I, if I let it go for another hour, yeah, you, the more yeah, you did it for two hours. Yeah, yeah. But wow. and then uh, this one here helped me with the twice stuff or twice baked potatoes, which turned out pretty good in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Uh, but yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already a Grand Lifer, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and become a Grand Lifer yourself. You don't really get anything you know, major out of it other than just seeing my pretty face, you know, every yeah. once in a while. Make sure to go check out the merch store over, uh, the link for the merch store will be in the description. We've got a bunch of really cool designs over there and stay classy, San Francisco. Bye. <laughs> stay classy. What does that mean? I don't know. I heard it on a movie once.